DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organizations. And essentially, this is a new way of, of organizing people thanks to blockchains and, and smart contracts. There's no central control and essentially organizational rules and regulations are executed by an algorithm run as a smart contract. People basically join DAOs because they share common interests, common values, and common goals. Just a bit of history. Talking about organizations in general, I mean, this guy is, is a philosopher, so whatever he writes is really deep. He talks about all kinds of different organizations. And I just took this little picture out of his paper <clears throat> just to show you guys what his thinking is. And he says in DAOs, the automation is in the center, which is a smart contract, and humans are at the edge of that automation. So essentially, like, like the previous graph, like right, there is a, basically an application in the center and people are, are essentially interacting with this application, with this, and, and also interacting with each other through that. That's really how he described a DAO. Uh, automation in the center, humans are at the edge. <clears throat> so what is a DAO? Being a, a bit deeper, we said software, right? It's a software uh, running a, on a blockchain, doing all the governance and executing rules and interacting with, with, uh, with the members. And then members actually have tokens. So there's, you know, sometimes one, sometimes multiple tokens native to that DAO. And the members hold those tokens. They either buy them, earn them, mine them there are different mechanisms to <clears throat> get those tokens but the tokens actually have a few purposes uh, it gives them rights to the DAO I mean if the DAO is generating any revenues or so it gives them rights to those <clears throat> but also gives them rights rights to vote because DAOs they are not static entities they change they evolve and, and in order to do that, since there's no central organization, members need to somehow come to agreement on what that changes and execute. So therefore, there needs to be some sort of a voting mechanism. And typically tied tokens. Um, so, and also essential also ownership. Tokens represent ownership uh, of the DAO. DAOs are constantly evolving and they are adding members. They are changing rules, finding new ways of doing things to, like we do right now in true hierarchical organizations. And there are so many new ways of uh, DAO implementations coming coming online. It's just a fascinating area. DAOs are run on blockchains. Uh, there are different types of blockchains: Bitcoin, Solana, Avalanche, Cosmos, Near, Polkadot, Terra, and probably like 100 plus blockchains out there some of them support smart contracts and they are uh, i mean ethereum is being the of course again the original host of DAOs. But DAOs are also on other uh, blockchains now and people choose different blockchains for different reasons cost is one ethereum is a really expensive uh, blockchain uh, so so therefore some people uh, go to other blockchains because they are cheaper to to transact. Another one is the technology. You know, different blockchains use different technologies to write smart contracts, different programming languages. Uh, so people choose also blockchains for different purposes. Also, people choose blockchains because they are part of that culture. There are a lot of tribes out there. People have their favorite groups and favorites. Uh, technologies and and therefore choose certain blockchains over others just because there's also a bit of an emotional connection to it then the smart contracts as I said those are the programs running on the blockchains and they are uh, basically written by programmers they run autonomously right you know once they are deployed they are uh, immutable uh, till till a group of people who actually have certain rights agree on changing it then then that's only time they can change it <clears throat> so most of the ones that smart contracts are deployed they are fairly stable and and they're ex they execute 
the rules and regulations of, of the DAO. Then there are wallets in the blockchain environment. So people use wallets to store their tokens. So tokens are units of the DAO. Gives people rights to the DAO, ownership to the DAO, uh, rights to the revenues of the DAO, DAO and voting rights and all that. And then the treasury, uh, you know, DAOs are, are financial entities. So uh, because they have tokens, right? And tokens have a value. So like uh, the financial piece is inherently baked into a DAO and, and the treasuries are locked in by the smart contract. And what happens is that different DAOs might have different ways of earning, generating revenues and, and those goes into treasury and then certain rules and pay dividends to the members through their token ownership and their membership. And then of course the members, the people, right? People are part of DAOs, as you know, Vitalik was saying, smart contract in the center and people are on the edges, right? They are, they are all interacting with the smart contracts and through smart contracts with each other using their wallets, their tokens. That's, those are, I think, are all the core ba building blocks of a DAO. Members yeah. are actual human beings. Yeah. Everything correct. else is digital, correct? Correct, correct. Yeah, that's what okay. I'm saying. These are, these are people basically participating in DAOs. Good that people come in somewhere. <laughs> and the treasury is held in a wallet that is also held in, in some sort of form of a wallet that is, I'll say, owned by the DAO or part of the but DAO. Smart contract, yes. The, the treasury is also a wallet, correct, but only accessed by the smart contract. So that's that's the beauty of it, right? I mean, of course, if you hack it, then it's a different story, and which happens, I mean, treasures have been looted because because smart contracts have bugs in them and whatever but assuming that's not the case i mean the treasury is is not accessible by anybody even the people who have written the code cannot access the treasury directly because that's what the smart contract holds and protects and only the rules determine how the the, the holdings of the treasury might be dispersed the story here is in a regular company, right? There is also a treasurer, but the treasurer is, is held by people, right? I mean, there's an accountant, there's a chief financial officer, and there's a bank and this and that, right? There are all these intermediaries do that role. If you want to access a company like has funds, let's say, in order to access, like you have to discuss that, like board of directors meeting, get an approval, and then that has to be communicated and, and, and all the steps have to happen. And at every step, there is there are humans involved, right? This thing is saying, like, let's take all that middleman out of the picture and let's write the rules into that software and, and, and do it also open source so everybody can see it, right? So that's what's going on here, really. Take those roles and roll into software and let the software do it. That's, that's why this is actually so interesting and big because it takes all the middlemen out of the picture and workflow and approvals sort of takes all that out and puts it into software.